my husband called me saying, hey, there's a, a litter of kittens in our back yard of our office. And so I went and looked, and boy, were they cute. They were, the mother was white, and the kittens were little tiny white uh, balls of fluff. And I went home, and I researched what you do in that case. And then I met up with uh, Nicola of the Homeless Cat Network. I was hooked. I uh, stayed with the program. You know, I became a volunteer just like she had been. Homeless cats keep appearing on the streets. Sicknesses, cars, uh, suffering, uh, stress from reproduction. Uh, they really don't, they're domestic animals. They really don't need to be on the streets. They suffer there. There's not enough food for them there. I, I want to do what I can. It's, it's, it's a small, um, small thing, but uh, I think it makes a big difference to the cat. So uh, the time is now. The time is now to uh, help these animals. I grew up thinking I was an American kid, but never in my mind did I think that I was an undocumented immigrant. I felt that I was the only person in this country that was undocumented that was trying to go to college because nobody was talking about it back in 2008. I thought I was the only one. When I found out that I was undocumented, I was still trying to put the pieces together of what that even meant. Who am I, what can I do, and who can I trust? It started with this blog and me putting local scholarships onto this blog, letting other people know these are the scholarships that got me in and they can help you. I hope they can. And here they are. And yeah, in 2014, the competition opened up, uh, Voto Latino Innovators Challenge. And it was asking anybody in the country to solve a problem um, using technology to solve it. So I pitched my idea and I made it to the top six in the country. And I went to DC pitched it in front of the judges, and I said, this is what the app would look like, and it would serve all of this population. I, I went through this a couple years ago. Thousands of students are going through it today still, and no one is doing anything about it, and I have the solution, and I want you to support me to fix it. So I won first place in the country, and I came home with $100,000 to be able to launch my app. One in three women, one in four men, will be victims of severe domestic violence in their lifetime. Over 70% of domestic violence incidents happen after a woman leaves the relationship. Uh, I have ladies who say, I used to be smart. These are women who ran entire departments, who owned their own companies, who were physicians, uh, who felt like they've been systematically dismantled from the inside out. I have women who've had uh, hidden cameras put in their smoke detectors, in their light fixtures in their home, uh, in the shower. Your car can turn into a listening device, a tracking device. It is possible to drive someone crazy and to see them, oh, I've got a plan now. I've got people I can call. I've got things I can do. I love that. I love that. And that's, that's why I do it, to see that hope and that light return. So I broke my back snowboarding. I was 16, took a jump gone bad, fell, and that was that. His life just kind of moved forward and just got involved into adaptive sports right away. And that was just a huge experience for me. My experience is from being disabled and kind of living an active lifestyle as through recreation therapy essentially um, gives me the, the, the background to connect with my patients mm -hmm. as well, my, the veterans that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, I have that kind of in with them where they can't really say no to me. They can't say, you don't understand, you don't know what you're talking about because I do and they trust me. And so they're able to have real conversations and um, get really down to the nitty gritty type of personal things that they might not be able to ask other people. You have a choice. You can either be happy or sad and whatever path you take, that's on you. So I chose, I chose the happy path. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes it was one meal a day, sometimes it was none, but I was just happy to be there. Uh, my dad, we didn't have much, and so going to school wasn't something that was just offered to kids. And there was a part of me that always somehow knew that if I just learn how to read, if I stay in school, and if I go to school, my life will be different than what it was at the time and what I was seeing around me for myself and so many friends and so many mothers around. And so that determination made me really just want to learn how to read and write. Uh, but back in 2016, I went back and um, 
it was just such a mixed feeling to be back. And when I was talking to the children, they said, look, Miss Evelyn, we want to be back here selling something so we can eat and so that our families can also eat. And so because of that, I said, you know, we're going to have a school. I don't know how, but this is what we're going to do. It, it just really made me feel like I was doing something important because of how far this little bit of money could go. Um, at Downtown Street Team, we like to say that homelessness is an experience, not an identity. Um, just because you're, you happen to be unhoused, that's not what defines you. Um, and you can imagine what that does to your psyche, to your sense of hope, uh, to your sense of dignity, to your sense of motivation for a better life. Um, when, when you walk down the street, people are trying to avert their eyes and not recognize you as a human. Um, it's really damaging. And so overwhelmingly, uh, you know, the, the folks in Palo Alto, when we were getting started, said that was the worst part about the homelessness experience. And once someone feels better about themselves, um, they're much more likely uh, to be stable in employment, in housing, um, to remove roadblocks to homelessness. When you come to one of our team meetings, it's really kind of, I always say, unhoused people helping other unhoused people out of homelessness. Um, and they're really doing a lot of the work together in this positive community. And so that's one of the main benefits that our team members get. But it also comes with case management services and employment services. And I actually think, um, you know, one of the one of the secret sauces, if, if you will, is uh, that uh, sense of community that they feel. Everybody's in a yellow shirt. It's kind of corny, but they're on the same team and they, they hold each other accountable. They support each other. And when you come to one of our team meetings, it's really kind of, I always say, unhoused people helping other unhoused people out of homelessness. 